Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, Eli here, Teak Fight. So, I got a question this week, and I thought it was really pertinent to not only helping out this individual, shout out to Tony, thank you for the question, but it was, I thought it was really pertinent to just a wide range of people in terms of just what I'm seeing in the art community and types of questions that I'm continually hearing uh, within the community, if you will. And so I'm going to read the question and give you kind of feedback on just an overall uh, of what kind of my opinion is and different things like that in regards to the question. So here we go. Are you self-taught or are you born talented? Uh, did you go uh, to graphics design school? It looks like your drawings are hand drawn and not vector drawings. Is that how you draw? Do you prefer hand drawing or do you like vector drawing? I'm sorry, but uh, I'm really you really inspired me. Thank you. Wow, that's cool. And I live up in the country where there really um, where I really have no other artist to talk to. I'm a senior uh, software engineer and I'm very passionate about my work uh, for years. But I've been doing it for 30 years, and for lack of a better term, it's fe the feeling is gone. Uh, let's see here. I'm getting closer to retirement age and I'm passionate uh, 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 and my passion is now making art, good or bad. I love the creative process as a software uh, developer. I've been creating uh, but now I want uh, to be a visual creative. I'm getting closer to my retirement years so now I want uh, to do something else I love. Do you think taking a graphics design class would uh, help or should I uh, just continue to practice my drawing painting every day? That's awesome. Tony, way cool. Thank you for the question. And again, you're not the only one asking this question. There are a lot of you out there that are really um, at, the, at the heart of it asking this type of question. There's lots to unpack here. Um, I, I would say first and foremost that the thing that comes to mind is, you know, when you think about it in terms of um, Dr. Seuss, you know, we all know who at this point in time probably know who Dr. Seuss is, you know, Cat in the Hat, you know, uh, the, the Horton the, the Elephant and just all sorts of stories, uh, Green Eggs and Ham, I mean, tons of stories that he was very influential in, in bringing um, into the children's sort of vocabulary as as normal everyday school reading for that age group that he was going after. But the thing is that's really cool about his story is that he really didn't take the stage, so to speak, until he was well in his 60s. I mean, think about it. He may have been drawing, I think he started roughly drawing or he was really started hitting the stage when he was at the age of 50 and then he really took off at the age of 60 plus. So I, I want to really first off encourage you, it doesn't matter age, it really doesn't. Um, I'm sitting at 40 and I'm a young spring chicken in, in the scope of things but if you think about it regardless of where we are, whether we had the opportunity to, to start out and at the age of, of 18 and felt really confident and got really good in the industry, there's times when those types of people, as they get into the 30s and 40s, they get burnt out and they don't end up doing kind of what you're talking about where they had a love for, in your case, you know, software engineering or a love for developing comics, but by the time they get to, you know, your 40s, 50s, eh, what's the point? It's, it's not exciting anymore and so you're off to diving into something else. And so I just, that's so awesome that, you know, just like Dr. Seuss, who knows, who knows what will happen with each of our works and how far it can go around the world. But the thing is, age really doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Um, another part of the question that kind of struck me was that, you know, am I self-taught or am I just born talented? You know, one of the things about that subject that I think is really important is that is it's based off of knowledge. You know, my experience or my expertise 
might be my God-given talent, if you will, might be a, a um, purity to be able to, to draw and draw well, but at the same time, that idea is based off of a deep understanding and a deep knowledge that got me to that point, which means you're, you're studying your foundations, not even though I might be working on a comic and might be working on producing artwork um, at a, you know, to, to sell or whatever that may be. On the side, what I'm doing is I'm working on my foundations. I'm going over, you know, your, your, your cube, cylinder, um, cone, uh, sphere. You're go I'm going over those shapes and how light and shadow react with those shapes. I'm, um, so your cast shadows and form shadows. I'm also looking at the human form and how to better draw the human form. I'm also looking at, um, uh, it's escaping me right now, but there's roughly about four of them. It'll come to me here in a second. But the point is, is I'm going back to my foundations and that's what's going to educate my knowledge, which then looks like raw talent. In reality, there was a lot of steps that took place before that. Now. Again, let's say, for example, that, well, I'm at this age, so on and so forth. Again, you have to start with the basics and breaking down the basic shapes and forms into something that's chewable. That's why we do thumbnail sketching and then start developing there. So necessarily am I born talented? I think some kids in my elementary school said, yeah, wow, he's a talented artist. But now sitting back where I am now and I would be looking at my you know, 10-year-old self, I would say, yeah, you're talented, but you have to develop that talent. Now, there's two ways to develop that talent. One is to actually go after it and take a class. The second way would be to sort of, as you alluded, self-taught. Now, if you're self-taught, there's kind of two parts to this along with taking a class. Now if you're taking a class, for example, one highly something that I'd highly suggest is that you go to and meet that professor who's taking or who you'd be taking that class from. You meet them, you get to know them, you take their workshop, you read maybe their any little lectures, their books, interviews, you really get to know them and the reason being is that I've gone through experiences where I didn't do that with my professor and I've been blessed with having a really good professor to be able to help nurture me along or a mentor to help nurture me along but then I've also I didn't I, I came like for example I went to U, uh, University of Lincoln Nebraska for my MFA and when I went there I went there for a specific, a specific professor. Well, it turns out that he was retiring and some other new guy came into place and I had no idea about him. And he took over the program and it was a horrible experience. And so that's what I'm saying is that when you go through and you're choosing a class that you want to take through, let's say at the, you want to go to the local community college or university or whatever that is, and you want to take a class from them, make sure you know their philosophy. You make sure that you know who they are and what they're about. What makes them tick? Why are they drawing? Why are they drawing this? You have a really good understanding of who they are. And based upon that information, that can be a, an evaluation of, yeah, this is a good alignment with that individual. And that, yeah, I think I'm going to learn a lot from this particular person. And again, that's why I would say earlier, I mentioned the word mentor. Mentor is someone who can be able to nurture you along and is able to stick with you based upon that mutual respect and mutual, uh, mutually benefit in a way that you could be able to progress each other along. And so that's really what I would suggest. So if you're taking a class, that's the first thing that comes to mind. Make sure that this person that you'd be taking a class from is going to line up with your goals and desires and where you want to end up. If they don't, you're going to be really wasting your time, in my opinion. Um, and that's something that, you know, regardless of where we are, it be it at 18 or 16 or whatever age to all the way up to 80 or 90, it really doesn't matter. Our time is certainly finite and we would, it, it would be a waste of time 
my bad experience was a waste of time at going to UNL at that point in time in my life. I didn't necessarily know what my goals and where I wanted to be. And on top of it, the professor who I ended up being under, which I didn't choose, was not remotely who I would choose to want to learn from and was actually detrimental to to my growth and development for a number of years. So that would be my experience and my ex, um, expectation that you would go after a particular artist that, that means something to you, a mentor rather, that means something to you and your goals sort of aligned. Now as far as being self-taught, as artists, we all have to have a sense of discovery. That's what brought us into artwork and making illustrations in the first place, is this, this sense of um, exploration and discovery. And there has to be a degree of exploration and discovery. So it's a really, it's a bit of both. Now, earlier this week, I did a post on this very topic, and it kind of breaks it down into four stages. Really, the key is you want to be able to, to work off a mentor. That's an absolute. You do need someone there to help nurture you along. Now, the other side of it is, is it does require an investment of time on your part. However, the cool thing about, um, you know, wherever you are, it's going to take a blend of those two things to really help develop your work and develop who you are and what you want to represent. And so it's a combination of those sort of things. And so um, it's really about finding the mentor, but then also spending what time you have. And that, that time that you have might, you know, if you can only spend two to three minutes in segments of a time, you know, and you build up to, you know, out of the course of a day of about 15 minutes, that's all you can spend. Fantastic. That's cool. But beyond that, you know, maybe you start building up from there and I, all I can spend is 15 minutes and then start developing from there. Now, as far as what I do personally um, with a vector or graphics design or um, illustration, I think all those are really um, interdependent on each other, in my opinion. So there's a lot of different avenues. Again, having a list of goals of where you want to end up will really help educate where you want to the direction you want to take to get there. Now, as far as graphics design goes, I did go to school for um, uh, uh, painting and drawing, and then also I had a double major in uh, graphics design. Now, is art school necessarily, quote, quote, uh, required to be an excellent artist? No. There are lots and lots and lots of really talented artists and examples. That's just where I found a particular mentor or two that helped nurture me along into where I am today. So a school isn't necessarily required as a gatekeeper to get you to that point. That can come from anywhere. The uh, other part of that is as far as graphics design goes, I see as with illustration, I think there's a lot of blend between illustration and graphic design. I don't know if that's necessarily what Tony's referring to, but I do think that graphic design in terms of if your your media is working with an illustrator and, and designing sort of that vector human figure or shape or environment or whatever story or, or experience you're trying to tell, it doesn't necessarily matter if that's the media that you love and you are drawn to, yes, then that's awesome. But for me, I've kind of gone back and forth. And from time to time, I'll go back and forth. Primarily right now, I'm looking at Photoshop a lot. I'm also looking at uh, just drawing by pencil. There's something about putting pen to paper that really gets me excited. And for someone else, that's going to look entirely different. And that's cool, man. But it, it's entirely up to you what that looks like. Um, I think those are all the pieces to that subject. Really the key is, to kind of wrap this all up, the key is have a mentor of some sort that you're going to gravitate towards and gain information off of. The other part is how much time are you able to devote? If you're able to devote a college class, if you will, worth of time, 
then by all means. But it doesn't only have to exist within that college environment. It can exist in, in a lot of different environments, um, which is part of the motive of why we're trying to do this Tikva thing and what does Tikva look like, Tikva Minds, Creative. We have several different things going on that relate back to that. But really the point is, is make sure you have that time that you can devote. Now let's say, for example, you don't have a lot of time to devote to a college course. There's plenty of options out there to be able to help you out, again with the mentor part, and again giving you the fundamentals to be able to work through illustration, let's say, on Adobe Illustrator, or work through using vector in that environment, or whatever application that is, Photoshop, pen and pencil in my case, or et cetera, et cetera. So there's lots of options. And I don't know if I necessarily answered Tony's question, but hopefully out there I answered some of you your, your questions in that it doesn't require, regardless of age or wherever you are, that's a starting point. And there's lots of artists that didn't get started till late in life. And on top of it, there were artists that were, yes, self-taught, quote, unquote, but I guarantee they had a mentor to get them from point A to point B to where they were. And that's kind of the story of our, our existence here. So hopefully that answered your question. And um, if you guys send more of these questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them as best as I can. Um, we're uh, about a few days away from like Monday, is kind of our go day, for launching our website, a new website, and uh, Tikva Minds. And that will address some of these things of, you know, why are we doing what we do? Why is it important? And then also going through the fundamentals and doing it at a pace that is is right for you guys and, and right for um, uh, be it your time and, and funding and those sort of things. So we're working on those things to be able to deliver a really unique uh, product that I haven't really seen on, on the internet. So we're working on that and we'll deliver that on Monday for you guys. I think that's it. Otherwise, have a blessed day and we'll check you later.